I want to begin by saying first uh, thank you to Reverend Rivera for the 99th rally, and I want to say publicly a great thank you to Chris and Eileen Sadri. That last year of my seminary training, I worked in, as Chris mentioned, their, their first pregnancy center, and I would say this, I want to stretch the remarks of the bishop tonight in regard to the spiritual perspective of what we're doing, what we're struggling with. My own experience in working with that pregnancy center was a very profound experience of how much this is a battle between light and darkness. Real evil is present in the support for abortion. I would begin even mentioning, as we begin you know, a small talk here, that you know, this passage from John's Gospel, to stretch again the biblical comments he was a murderer from the beginning, Jesus said, and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks according to his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. So much of what we heard tonight, those videos, the video of the Planned Parenthood clinic, how much camouflage, how much cover-up, how much lie is present there? And I would suggest the thought that that's not just a human lie. That where the great, incredible evil of abortion takes place, there is always demonic presence. The evil one is behind it. And he's also battling right now between forces of light, forces of darkness. And he's asking us, Jesus is asking us, you know, to remember that all of this is, is not just political, it's not just, you know, some struggle for a better society. It's a struggle for souls. It's a struggle for eternal life. Jesus is going to would, would remind us that lie was present from the beginning with Adam and Eve. It will be present to the end. Jesus is crucified because of a lie lie of a false accusation. And always when the lie is being spoken, the repeated lies of that woman in the Planned Parenthood clinic, the lie of trying to cover up always the truth. Look what a pregnancy counseling center is. It's an effort to speak truth, to bring light, comforting light to a young girl who may be frightened, somewhat desperate, stress, pressure, to bring light to her, to make her aware. God is the creator of that new life within you. And how much the devil really is real, trying to crush that, trying to squeeze that truth away. And how much we have to be aware, also, part of this rally tonight is to walk away, not just enthused for pro-life, just to realize we have to be, if we're going to fight for life, we have to be souls very deeply of prayer. Amen. We have to turn to the gospel. We have to hear the voice of Jesus Christ speak to us. We have to feel his own challenge in our own heart. I want to say also today, tonight publicly, I applaud you, Chris, Eileen, all of you who just stood up a moment ago and give your life. Give your life to this kind of work. If I was to ask you personally, can you do this without prayer? Can you do that without having a life close to God? You better be close to God because you have somebody else trailing behind you. This is a true battle. This is not neutral. This is a true battle between light and darkness, the evil one, and God himself. And he wants us all to be repeating in a way that awareness, we've heard it from other speakers. God is the creator. God is the creator. And an abortion is not just a tragic sadness. It really is an insult to God. It's spitting in the face of God. It's nothing less than spitting at Jesus in his face on the cross. And we're being asked we're being asked by so many good speakers, so many people who are not speaking at a, at a microphone, 
but giving witness with their lives, going before abortion clinics. How heroic that is. And I want to say, I applaud. You are young people, many of you out here, college students. I not just applaud, I bow before you who give yourself in time that frustrating effort sometimes, that disappointing effort at times to talk to a girl and yet she still will go through that door into a plane. And yet this is the fight for giving ourselves in faithfulness to Jesus Christ. And I applaud, I encourage, be, be someone who goes before an abortion clinic, give volunteer help to these emergency pregnancy centers. Give yourself, give in witness to what God is asking of us. And above all, I would say tonight, let us be reminded as we walk out into the night, let us pray. Let us pray. So much of this depends, not just that we pray for something, but that we're affected personally by our prayer. You know, I just heard tonight from the Fordham student saying, look, on a Catholic campus, Catholic Church is very pro-life, anti-abortion. Look, that darkness is everywhere. Professors, advocates for abortion, it's everywhere. Unless we are people of prayer, giving myself in close bonds with our Lord Jesus Christ, this is a futile effort. And we're being asked to buy Him be souls of great faithfulness, of prayer, and also to realize the union of that. You know, many of us have come from different churches here tonight, and yet are we united tonight? So much. So much one in soul tonight. We are one in our soul tonight, and who does that? God Himself. So let us pray. Apart from ye, me, you can do nothing. You can do nothing apart from me. And yet with me, nothing is impossible. And that means one girl at a time, nothing is impossible. So thank you again, Chris. Thank you for all of you.